come to a really awesome woods. This one is huge. I found it on Google Maps. I wish I bought the drone now so I could kind of show you just how big this thing is. And uh, I'm still on the hunt for winter chanterelles. They're going to be fizzling out soon, so I haven't got too much longer as things get colder and colder. But uh, I'm holding out hopes. A um, couple of days ago I found, uh, if you watched my last video, a huge bunch of oyster mushrooms and some velvet shanks. And I've eaten all that already, frozen a bunch of mushroom soup that I made. But uh, yeah, really good find. So I'm hopeful and feeling pretty positive today. Because obviously being winter, um, there's not too much around, or so people always think. But um, you can get lucky. Let's see what we can do. also mention one of the other types of mushrooms that I'm quite keen to find are the bluets. The wood bluets and the field bluets. Hoping to find wood bluets today because I'm in a woods. A little bit trickier to spot, quite often they're under the leaf litter. But when you do see them they're gorgeous, they're all lilac -y purple and hopefully I'll find one and show you. <laughs> there we go, look at this. That's a little bit of oyster. We'll leave that there, but that's pretty cool. So, my wife is uh, out for the afternoon, seeing a friend in Swindon, so I was straight out of the door. Her sister, Tamara, who's currently living with, living with us, has got COVID, unfortunately. Um, she's kind of staying in her room and we're looking after her and bringing her food and stuff, but we haven't picked it up. Everybody who stayed with us at Christmas got COVID. We were constantly testing ourselves and never picked it up. So, who knows, might get it soon, might have already had it. Can't really explain it, but we've been around a lot of people that seem to have ended up positive and um, we've been good so far these are just coffee bags but it's ground coffee it's really good quality fresh from the bean no messing about no chemicals all the rest of it you get with Nescaf and all that sort of stuff it's not like the instant you get a really good flavor as well a little bit different to what you'd get if you were to percolate it or run it through a machine or filter it or what have you I think so anyway I shouldn't be stirring it you're supposed to let it sit
Well, what can I say? I just found something I've wanted to find since I was a little boy. I was into, I've always been into animals and wildlife and things, but I've always wanted to find and see a great crested newt. They are exceptionally rare and they are a protected species. You're not allowed to touch their homes, mess around with them, you're certainly not allowed to destroy where they live. You have to take great care when you find them. I shouldn't have picked it up to be honest, but I was so excited, it kind of just happened in the moment and I kind of stumbled across him accidentally. He's been put back very, very carefully now in his little home, so he's happy, he's gravy, he's all good. But I'm really, really chuffed to have seen a great crested newt and I might never see another one for the rest of my life. If you ever see one with a beautiful fire belly, lovely orange colours, count yourself lucky. You probably won't see another one. Awesome. So apart from that awesome little newt that I found, I found a really good example of a birch polypore. Bagged it up. I don't know too much about polypores and bracket fungus, uh, but I do know that they have loads of awesome properties. Medicinal, antifungal. You can make a plaster with the skin. You can grind them down and put them in smoothies and soups and things like that. They are edible. The fungus as it is is probably very tough and probably doesn't taste very nice, but you can ingest it and that's what I plan on doing. Once I've drilled into the details, I know exactly what I've got. Anyway, I'm not giving up yet. I'm still looking and uh, we still have, I don't know, about half an hour of light and I'm still looking for my little edibles. Anyway, not bad. A great crested newt and a beautiful example of a birch polypore that I can study later. So every time I find something, I feel like I can learn from it and, and use it. I do, I take it home. And uh, as I say, I've only been doing this for a year, so I've got loads to learn, but you only learn by getting out there, cracking on with it. Anyway, I've been out here for hours now, so I should probably head back to, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, yes. Now, <laughs> so check this out, guys. Let me spin it round. Now, if you watched my last video, you will recognize these. Yeah, baby. <laughs> so if I hadn't found a beautiful stack of these a couple of days ago in my last video, so refer back to my last video. Look at them. They're everywhere here. These are oysters. There's a beautiful one over there. Look at that one. Wow. Yes. So if I hadn't eaten a bunch of these just a couple of days ago, this would be going home with me but um, I took a lot with me last time I got plenty at home uh, as a soup at the moment and we have eaten a lot with our food but these are really nice look at these really good to eat absolutely delicious I mean I might take a few there's quite a few here let's do it let's take a couple you know you can walk for hours sometimes and find nothing and then suddenly you know I'm on the route back home and I suddenly see a bunch of these. Look at them. So I'm going to take a few because I know how delicious they are and I've been uh, putting a lot of effort in today. So great crested newt, beautiful birch polypore and some uh, oyster mushrooms to take home. Great. There we go. There we are. Check this baby out. Take a couple, this one's been nibbled a little bit as well, but there's plenty of flesh on there for me. You can see that the gills are decurrent as well. I don't think I mentioned that in my last video. They run all the way down the little stem. These guys are also carnivorous as well. They eat neotoad worms, which live in the wood. Um, they are non-segmented parasitic worms. And these guys kind of lasso them with their mycelium and uh, gobble them up. Pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining along. Just a little wonder today. All good. Got some little uh, treasures. Seen some things. And uh, next video will be a camp. Cool. See you later. Bye de bye.
<laughs> so your boy's got x-ray vision. This is a bluet. This is what I've been looking for. This guy isn't the best example. The smell is floral, it's sweet. Some people say it smells like uh, fresh orange juice. It's delicious. Now this is kind of purpley, lilac-y, all the way around, all the way through. Even You can even see the, the hue in the uh, the cap. This one's been gnawed a lot by all the little critters. Um, this has got a very toxic look-alike in the Cortinarius family, which is called the bruising web, web cap. Um, smells nothing like this thing. This gives off buff pink spores. So the other ones, the bruising web cap, is a very rusty uh, brown. And you'll often see that on the stem, staining the stem on the little skirt, sometimes on the gills, any other mushrooms below it often get all rusty and dirty as well. So no rusty dust, beautiful, fragrant, mushroomy, fruity sm smell growing up out of the leaf litter. These are fantastic edibles in winter when you find them. I've been out all day and I've only just found them. Well, I found one and it's not in a great condition, but as they get older, they do lose that color a little bit. They go a little brown on top, but they always do keep that purpley hue. It's one of those mushrooms you don't really want to play around with until you really know what you're doing. But I've been looking for this for a while and uh, I found a, a pretty shabby one, but still happy to find one before I go home. So awesome. The wood blew it. Excellent. So I've got to get out of here now and uh, go back and get some dinner. So, laters.